Uh, the first and most obvious flaw with value-added models for use as a tool for teacher evaluation, by which I mean applications where we're making consequential decisions about individuals based on data derived from their students' test scores is the unreliability of these, these measures. There's just a t way, way, way too much noise. And this is a data problem. It's not a, an analysis problem. It's not that some more sophisticated model or some different choice of covariates or some better way of scaling or something is going to fix it. There simply is a fundamental limitation because teacher effects, by which I mean the differences between highly effective and less effective teachers, simply don't account for that much of the variation in students' year-to-year -year test score gains. So we have to separate a weak signal from a lot of noise. That's the first problem. The next problem is that the models in doing this have to account for biases or systematic differences, not just random error, but the, but the systematic error that tends to show up in the same direction year after year, uh, with classroom after classroom for a given teacher, either positive or negative. Teachers who are in schools where there's a strong academic climate, where the peer culture is supporting academics, where the parents are supporting academics, where the teachers work together and learn from each other, are in a vastly, uh, have a vastly easier time of it than teachers uh, whose circumstances are the converse. And we can't rely just on some regression equation to iron all that out. Uh, thinking about the various things that go into a student's test score, what, what determines how much students grow from one year to the next? What are the, the sources of variation in those gains? Obviously, the teacher is one important factor, and stronger teachers will uh, bring about, encourage bigger gains than, than weaker teachers. But in addition, we have all of the out-of-school supports that some students enjoy relative to others. We have the peer culture within the school. We have the academic learning climate. We have all the learning to learn that's gone on to differing degrees for different students in years past. Uh, so it's not just one teacher this year that's responsible. It's a whole instructional history and whole out-of-school context, as well as the uh, school context that's supporting the school learning during, during this time. So if it was just a matter of prior year differences, it was just a matter of the starting points that student, where students began, that alone would be a challenge because last year's test scores will only imperfectly measure that. But it's, it's far more than that. It's all the things that result in students having different rates of learning, different trajectories this year because of those differences in support.